My name is Suzanne McIndoo. I'm from the Ultra Cold Quantum Gases Group in the Physics Department in University College Cork. Um, I work with a type of matter called a Bose-Einstein condensate, and it's a superfluid, and I'm looking at vortices or whirlpools in this superfluid. We're just dealing with matter when it's really, really cold. We're talking billionths of a degree above zero Kelvin. And uh, when we say gases, I mean, we're talking about like, lots of different types of things. Um, I'm working with a Bose-Einstein condensate, which is a superfluid of bosons. And uh, it's, it's, it's not really a gas, we call it a gas, but it's an entirely new state of matter. It's something completely separate from the solid liquid gas that you all know about. I study uh, vortices or whirlpools in the condensate. The condensate is a superfluid, so it's a fluid without friction. And without friction, the vortices don't slow down and stop like they would in your coffee cup. So if you stir a fluid, like I'm stirring this water here, you can see I'm getting a little whirlpool. However, as soon as I stop stirring, it's just settled down. I mean, the whirlpool is almost completely gone. There's still a little movement, but it's essentially gone. So if this was a quantum fluid, a quantum superfluid, and I stirred it up, it would just keep moving and keep moving until you do something new to the system. I'm, I'm hoping to be able to theoretically predict the behavior of these things. So. You know, if you've got if you've got a condensate with uh, five vortices, what are they doing? Are they moving? Are they sitting still? Are you know how much are they spinning? How fast is everything spinning? What's actually going on in the condensate? I'm a theorist, so I don't do experiments in the lab. I do simulations. So I I create a, a condensate in the computer. So I, I do all my simulations. They're they're my experiment. I, I, I did things like the, the math Olympiad, and uh, I you know, did maths table quizzes, and you know, was the only girl in several classes. <laughs> and of course, I beat the guys at applied maths. Um, I, I like to do some girly things. I like to bake a lot, and um, I like to do things like cross-stitch. So I kind of like to indulge that, that stereotypically girly side. The stuff I'm working on is kind of, it's, it should be much more on the theoretical end of things. It's kind of a little bit more obscure, but in terms of applications, we're looking at quantum computing, quantum information applications. We want to be able to store information and process information in kind of special quantum ways. We're creating tools, and with any tool, if it falls into the wrong hands, it could be a bad thing. But the tool doesn't really have necessarily bad applications. A big area is, um, in quantum computing is code breaking and in quantum information is cryptography or kind of protecting information. So as long as we keep the protecting information a, a few steps ahead of the code breaking, everything's okay. But I think code breaking is probably the, the biggest danger of this, this, this type of research. There's a kind of a constant conveyor belt of, of science. You've got the people right at the end who are packaging up the science and sending it out in boxes and they're you know, the mathematicians at the end sending out the raw material and I'm kind of kind of probably slightly closer to the mathematicians. Now I can see the other end, but I'm kind of in the middle of the conveyor belt. Any applications of the research I'm doing is kind of you know, 20, 30 years away. Uh, there, there are some people whose applications are kind of two years and a patent away, but, but that's, that's not why we're doing it.